Welcome to another episode of the truth that leads to the eternal life. We think the of the leaders of the children of Israel after Moses, how they said unto a prophet whom they had set up for us a king, and we will fight in the way of God. He said, would he then refrain from fighting if fighting were prescribed for you? They said, why should we not fight in the way of God when we have been driven from our dwellings with our children? Yet when fighting was prescribed for them, they turned away all save a few of them. God is aware of evildoers. Their prophet said unto them, Lo, God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, hath raised up Saul to be a king for you. They said, How can he have kingdom over us when we are more deserving of the kingdom than he is, since he hath not been given wealth enough? He said, Lo, God, hath chosen him above you, and hath increased him abundantly in wisdom and stature. God bestoweth his sovereignty on whom he will. God is all embracing, all knowing. And their prophet said unto them, Lo, the token of his kingdom is, that there shall come unto you the ark, wherein is peace of reassurance from your Lord, and a remnant of that which the house of Moses and the house of Aaron left behind, the angels bearing it. Lo, hearing shall be a token for you, if in truth ye are believers. And when Saul set out with the army, he said, Lo, God will try you by the ordeal of a river. Whosoever therefore drinketh thereof, he is not of me. And whosoever tasteth it not, he is of me. Save him who taketh thereof in the hollow of his hand. But they drank thereof all save a few of them. And after he had crossed the river, he and those who believed with him, they said, We have no power this day against Goliath and his hosts. But those who knew that they would meet God exclaimed, How many a little company hath overcome a mighty host by the permission of God? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with the steadfast. And when they went into the field against Goliath and his hosts, they said, Our Lord, bestow on us endurance, make our foothold firm, make our foothold sure, and give us help against the disbelieving folk. So they routed them by the permission of God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty and the Magnificent. And David slew Goliath, and God gave him the kingdom and wisdom, and taught him of that which he willeth. And if God had not repelled some men by others, the earth would have been corrupted. But God is a Lord of kindness to his creatures. These are the portents of God which we recite unto thee, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace be upon him, with truth. And lo, thou art of the number of our messengers. Brothers and sisters, peace be upon you. In this episode, I'd like to remind you of King David. King David, peace be upon him, lived approximately 3,000 years ago, more or less. He was born in Jerusalem. And the Almighty speaks about him, how courageous he was, and how he stood against Goliath, a giant. 
However, I'd like to take you back a little in history and tell you about one of the narrations of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, telling us that when the Almighty God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty and the Magnificent, created Adam and then showed Adam all his offsprings that are about to come. He showed Adam their souls, shall I say, their spirits. So as Adam salam, as Adam, peace be upon him, was looking at his offsprings, looking at their souls, and looking at their foreheads, their faces, he saw one that was really shiny. One was shining really, really bright. So he looked at it and then he saw closely that was King David, peace be upon him. But it was written on his forehead that he's only going to live only 40 years. So Prophet Adam, peace be upon him, said, my Lord, his life is so short. Give him 60 years of my life. So the Almighty accepted it and gave 60 years of Adam's life to King David. That means he lived approximately 100 years. So Adam was supposed to live 1,000 years. He was the first man whom God created. What happened was when the angel of death came to prophet Adam, he was about 940 years old. And he complained to the angel of death, wait a minute, I was supposed to live a thousand years. This is what God promised me. He said, yes, but don't you forgot that you gave 60 of years of your life to your son, David, remember? Mm. <laughs> now he remembers. So the Almighty is telling us in the Holy Quran, the Holy Quran, the final testament, chapter 2, verse 246, chapter 2, verse 246, the Almighty says, leaders of the children of Israel, after Moses, now these are the, the leaders who took over the message of Moses and Aaron and they were the leaders of the children of Israel. Then the Almighty goes on by saying, the prophet said unto them, Lo, God hath raised up Saul to be a king for you. So immediately they said, why should he have kingdom? He has no money, he has no wealth, he's got nothing. God has given him wisdom and stature and the token of his kingdom is that the ark of Moses and Aaron where there is peace of reassurance from your Lord and a remnant of that which the house of Moses and house of Aaron left behind the angels bearing it so this is a sign from God that those tablets Moses put inside the ark, they were so holy, the hand written of God, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty and the Magnificent. Imagine that, the handwriting of the creator of the heavens and the earth. What more beauty you want to look at and see. The handwriting of the creator of the heavens and the earth so at this moment year 2020 unfortunately up to this time the ark, ark has been lost the ark is lost they don't know where it is they cannot find it so there are many theories about this where it might be but the Quran here clearly is stating that the angels are bearing it. So stop digging under the mosque of Al-Aqsa. Don't do that. 
Don't try to look under that ancient structure that is holy to the Muslims of the world and they are thinking that it's under the rock, the dome of the rock. Some believe it's there. I don't think so. The Quran here mentions, go and check it out. Herein shall be a token for you, if in truth ye are believers. Chapter 2, verse 248. So please, stop digging and almost damaging the structure and causing it to collapse. Don't do that. So the Almighty chooses Saul to be a king and then when he sets out with the army, he tells his army that God is going to test you by a river. The Almighty God is going to test you by a river. How is he going to test you? And he says, Whosoever Okay, therefore drinketh thereof, he is not of me. That means we're going to go by a river and whoever is going to drink from that river, from that lake, shall I say, or the river that's passing through this fresh water, he's telling them that whoever drinks from it, when we get there, he is not of me. You're not with me. That means you don't belong to my army. Get out of here. Go back. I don't need you. Because here's the taste of faith. God wants to test them. A test of faith. That who's going to listen to the chief? And then he says, Whosoever tasted it not, he is of me. That means if we get to the river and you don't taste it, you don't taste the water, then you are with me. Save him who taketh thereof in the hollow of his hand. That means only one sip from the hollow of your hand you are allowed to drink. That's it. But the Almighty says they drank and drank thereof, all save a few of them. So we have about two to three thousand uh, soldiers from the children of Israel going against Goliath in this battle. But these guys, they drank so many of them, drank so much water that their stomachs became huge, like balloons. They couldn't move. They couldn't move. So out of two to three thousand, shall I say, only 313 guys came out that they obeyed the chief of the army. And among them was King David. And he was only a youth. He was a young man. A very young man. And after he had crossed the river, he and those who believed with him, they said, we have no power this day against Goliath and his hosts. So they started complaining to the ruler or to the chief, hey chief, come on, look at us. There's only 313, we're going against this Goliath, this giant, and they've got thousands of people with them. So those who had firm faith in God, firm belief, they said, how many a little company have overcome a mighty host? So that was a good news for them. And they, when they went into the field against Goliath, they made a prayer. Chapter 2, verse 250. رَبَّنَا أَفْرِضْ عَلَيْنَا صَبْرًا و 
وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا أفرق علينا صبرا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين When they went into the field against Goliath and his hosts, they said, Our Lord, bestow on us endurance, make our foothold sure, and give us help against the disbelieving folk. So they routed them by the permission of God, and David slew Goliath, and God gave him the kingdom and wisdom, and taught him of that which he willeth. And if God had not repelled some men by others, the earth would have been corrupted. But God is a Lord of kindness to his creatures. Might as well, we're all going to drown. Because all the humanity is like in one boat. It has the upper deck and the lower deck. So when the people of the lower deck needed water, they had to ask the people of the upper deck, we need water. So after some time, the people of the lower deck said, why should we cause so much trouble asking our brothers upstairs for water while we can have all the water we want by making a hole in the boat? So if the brothers upstairs do not stop the brothers downstairs, they're all going to drown. Yes, I am against war and destruction, but is sometimes it is necessary to correct what needs to be corrected. And if God had not repelled some men by others, the earth would have been corrupted. The Creator has given humanity His manual, just like a, a car factory that builds a car, a brand new car. There is a manual inside the dashboard that tells you how to take care of this vehicle. When to do the oil changes, when to do the tire rotation, when to do this and that. Similarly, God the Almighty created us and gave us His manual telling us what to do, what's good for us, what's bad for us, what we should eat, what we should not eat. Don't follow your own whims and desires. It will take you away from the way of God. Don't do that. If you read the Holy Quran, the Almighty sent messengers to all nations in different times, telling those people to worship one God and to turn away from idols and stones and from worshiping objects don't do that the real God is unseen no vision can grasp him the omnipotent the omnipresent the self-subsisting eternal incorporeal uncomposed without variableness the absolute the all-seeing the all-hearing the all-knowing the mighty the wise the creator of the heavens and the earth. These creations are a testimony to his greatness. There is none like unto him. Yes, believe in thy Lord and follow his commandments and he will raise your status in this life and the hereafter. We just heard the story of David, peace be upon him, Lord of might. And he used to fast six months out of the year. Can you imagine? That means every other day he used to fast. That's unbelievable. That's amazing. That's why the Almighty calls him David, Lord of might. 
Can you fast every other day for a whole year? And on and on and on. Incredible. That's pretty amazing, huh? So fasting is very, very important for your health. It will stop you from becoming the slave of your habits. Drinking, eating, smoking, whatever. You become in a state of angelic, shall I say, because angels don't eat or drink. So you get that feeling. Allahu Akbar. It is a blessing of the Almighty on us human beings that He has created angels that have the similarities of human beings like Jibril, Ruhul Qudus, Angel Gabriel, the Holy Spirit came to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the mountain of light in Arabia more than 1400 years ago and he was on, on the mountain in a cave and Angel Gabriel came to him in the shape of a man standing in the horizon and told him that I am Gabriel and you Muhammad are the messenger of God. Here are some results from a search. <laughs> Interesting. So what happened? The angel told the prophet, peace be upon him, to read, read. The prophet replied, I cannot read and I cannot write. So the angel told him to recite in the name of thy Lord who created man from a sensitive drop of blood, who teaches man what he knows not, read. So Prophet Muhammad recited those verses after the angel like a teacher telling you to say this and you repeat and he remembered every word and later he told it to those who could write. So Prophet Muhammad was 40 years old he came down down from the mountain and he immediately went home to his wife shivering telling his wife to cover me cover me and then he told his wife Khadija radiallahu anha as to what had happened and the prophet said what's wrong with me what has happened to me so she calmed him down by telling him no you are a righteous man, you are a truthful man, you never break the promise, God would never let anything bad happen to you. So he, he was cool and calm and then she had a family member, an old man who was a Christian called Varaka, an old man, almost blind. So the Prophet with his wife Khadija went to him and explained as to what had happened and he immediately said this is the same angel that came to Moses to Jesus to Mary mother of Jesus the Holy Ghost that's angel Gabriel who came to you and he said I wish I would have been alive long enough to see what's going to happen to you because I know once you start to preach these people are going to kick you out and this is exactly what happened when the Prophet started preaching the truth to his companions, to his family members, 50% believed in him and 50% disbelieved in him. It's a long story. You have to study about it. And once you do, then you will fall in love with Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, just like I did. What a great man. He was the half-brother of Jesus, the son of Mary. Peace be upon him. Jesus, the Messiah, son of Mary, he was from the family tribe of 
Prophet Abraham and Sarah. But Prophet Muhammad was from the family tribe of Prophet Abraham and Ishmael. You know, Hagar, his second legal wife, who had a son named Ishmael, his firstborn. So they're cousins in religion. The Arabs and the Jews are actually cousins in religion. I hope you understand what I'm saying here. So brothers and sisters, the Quran is the final testament. Jesus told his disciples if the truth had not been erased from the book of Moses, there was no need for the second book to be given to our father David. But because the book of David was contaminated, God committed the gospel to me. But because my gospel will also be contaminated by the operation of Satan and by ungodly people, the Almighty is going to send the last and the final messenger. Muhammad, Ahmad, the praised one, the comforter, he's going to be sent to mankind and the Almighty is going to give him a book, the Quran, that is going to stay in, in this world to the day of judgment and forever and ever untouched and preserved. No one has the ability to change one letter, one word from the Holy Quran. Why? Because it was preserved through memorization. 6,236 verses. Whew. Miraculous. So Prophet Muhammad and his followers for the past 1400 years, even today, 2020, we have thousands and perhaps millions of Muslims around the world whose children are Hafiz who are preservers of the Holy Quran, word for word, letter for letter. Yes, indeed, this final book of God, because Prophet Muhammad was the last messenger of God, so this book was to be the last and the final book of God to mankind. And when Jesus returns, inshallah soon, he's going to tell all mankind to follow the Quran and the way of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He himself will be following the Quran and believing in Prophet Muhammad as the last messenger of God. So Jesus, the son of Mary, is actually the sign of end of time. Right before the end of this world, like we're getting close to the end, he hasn't come yet, but inshallah soon he's going to arrive in Jerusalem, around that area, and he will be descending with his hands on two angels, Gabriel and Michael, Michael, and with him will be Enoch and another prophet. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Elisha. He's coming down because they were human beings and they need to finish their life in this world and will be buried like any other human beings. So Jesus is going to be getting married like all the prophets who had wives. He will get married and he will die like any other human being. And he has a request that I'm going to be buried next to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in Medina. SubhanAllah. And if you go to Medina right now in Arabia, you will see that there is a grave next to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, it's empty. Next to Prophet Muhammad, his two buddies, his best friend Abu Bakr and the second caliph, Omar are buried right next to him. So his best friend was the first, uh, I mean, after his departure from this world, was the first Khalif and the second was Omar. So that place is ready and is empty for Jesus, peace be upon him. But when he comes back, he's going to be buried there. 
And he's going to tell all the Christians of the world, I never told you to worship me. I told you to worship God, my Lord and your Lord. And don't join gods with God. For whosoever join gods with God, God will forbid him the garden of paradise. So don't call me God. On the day of judgment, if you call him God, he's going to tell you, I don't know you. Who did Jesus pray to? God, Allah. So don't mix things up, please. Peace be upon you. So when Jesus comes back in Jerusalem, when he comes back, it's going to be the prayer of uh, evening for the Muslims. And there is a leader, a Muslim leader called Imam Mehdi. Alayhi salam. This caliph is going to come seven years before Jesus returns to this world. This caliph is going to take over the Muslim world and unite them. And he's going to fight for the truth and justice for the Muslims. In other words, you're not going to see what they're doing to the Muslim brothers and sisters in Burma. They killed more than 30,000 of them. Break their women, burn them alive. That's not gonna happen. When Imam Mehdi comes, inshallah, he's going to stand up for justice for the Muslims around the world. Nobody's going to have party on Muslims, you know? cut them and chop them and eat them. No, God is not going to allow that. When this Khalifa or Khalifa, this Viceroy comes, when he comes, inshallah, Imam Mehdi, you're not going to see what's going on in Syria anymore. You're not going to see what's going on in all around the Muslim world. I don't want to mention it. You all know there is so many of them suffering. So inshallah, this will happen. Then after seven years of rule and justice, he will get an announcement that Masih at the Jal have arrived. The Antichrist have arrived. And this man has such, he has discovered such power that he will come with fire and water. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, told us that when he comes with his fire and water, if his fire hits you, it actually is water. And if his, its water hits you, or you fall into its water, it's actually fire. So this guy is a magician, shall I say. A liar, a charlatan. So the, even the prophet, all the prophets prayed against this mischief maker. Oh Allah, save us from the mischief of Masih al So no one has the power actually to fight this man except Jesus, the son of Mary. As I mentioned, he's going to come down with two angels and he will see that it is the prayer time, the Asr time, and Imam Mehdi has not made the takbir yet. He has not started the prayer yet, and he tells Jesus, the son of Mary, that you are the leader, please go in the front and take over and lead us in prayer. But Jesus, the son of Mary, peace be upon him, tells Imam Mehdi, alayhi salam, continue. So he will pray behind Imam Mehdi and all the Muslim army and then they go after the prayer to fight against this mischief maker because he will be making so much mischief in the earth that you cannot imagine. 
That's why the Almighty had a plan. And he raised Jesus to be with him 2,000 years ago when the Romans and the Jews wanted to crucify him. The Almighty took him up and now he's going to bring him back at almost end of time to fight against this Antichrist. And when Jesus finds him in Syria, he will kill him with a spear and the Jal just melts in water like salt out of fear. And there's going to be peace and happiness in the world. Everybody is going to become a believer in the world by that time. There's going to be no such as atheists, as disbelievers, because after people see what really happened, everybody when they see the miracle, they're going to become believers. So, 100% of all mankind in the world by that time will become believers. But it's only going to last for 40 years. After that, again, human beings go back to their old way of bad, you know, disbelieving and becoming, again, atheists. And, and you know, by time, just human beings go, gets lost. Eventually, that's going to happen. After 40 years, people are going to go back to their evil doings. Really, I mean, it's going to get really bad by the end of time. And then, then the Prophet tells us many sayings about the end of time. The Holy Quran says, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذا الشمس كورت وإذا النجوم كدرت وَإِذَا الْجِبَالُ سُيِّرَتْ وَإِذَا الْإِشَارُ أُتِّلَتْ وَإِذَا الْوَحُوشُ حُشِرَتْ وَإِذَا الْبِحَارُ سُجِّرَتْ وَإِذَا النُّفُوسُ زُوِّجَتْ وَإِذَا الْمَوْؤُودَةُ سُئِلَتْ بِأَيِّ ذَنْبٍ قُتِلَتْ وَإِذَا الصُّحُفُ نُشِرَتْ وَإِذَا السَّمَاءُ كُشِتَتْ وَإِذَا الْجَحِيمُ سُعِرَتْ وَإِذَا الْجَنَّةُ أُزْلِفَتْ عَلِمَتْ نَفْسٌ مَا أَهْضَرَتْ When the sun is overthrown, when the stars fall, losing their luster, when the oceans boil, when the mountains become scattered dust, when the graves are turned upside down, when the book of deeds are laid out, on that day every soul will know what it has done. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzata amma yasifun وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين